Hey, uh, first question I'm going to start off by running by you is this today, uh, in our last section of chapter one. Uh, formula. You guys have heard the word. What's it mean to you? The word formula. What's that mean to you? Right. Hey, here's a formula for something. What's it mean? Anybody have an idea? You want to help me out here? What's your definition of formula? Well, I think you can solve the problem. Oh, solve the problem. Okay. Um, anybody have an example of a formula? Have you ever used formulas in a science class or anything? Yeah? You remember what formula it? Okay. Remember that one formula we worked with in chapter uh, one, section two about distance? to a what times what? Rate times time. Yeah, rate times time. Exactly what we're going to be looking at today. Guys, we're going to start looking at rewriting equations and formulas. And formulas are basically a way of uh, um, expressing some kind of amount as it relates to another factor. So you guys probably have heard this formula. E equals what? Mz squared. Okay, you've heard that formula before. But um, today we're going to start looking at rewriting equations and formulas so that we can solve for different parts. And today what we want to know is how can we use a formula for one measurement to write a formula for a different measurement. And goals for us today will be the following. We're going to look at what we call rewriting literal equations. I'll tell you what that is in a second. We're going to look at rewriting uh, and using formulas for area. And we're also going to look at rewriting and using uh, other common formulas. Okay, so those are the three things we're trying to accomplish today. And uh, to make sure that we're all talking in the same language, let's make sure we understand what this is. Uh, first one, I have literal equation up here. Who wants to read my definition for me? How about a volunteer to read my definition? Go ahead, CJ. The equation has two or more variables, keeping in mind that variables are just letters that represent numbers, right? So an equation, if it has an equation, what sign must exist? Yeah. So help me write an equation that has two variables in it uh, with an equal sign. Anybody have an idea on a volunteer solution? Go ahead. Wait, variables have a number? Or like something Sure, that'd be fine. Okay. Um, So you're going 13 plus. Oh, no. Nope, you're not going. You're fine. 19. Okay. So we have an equation up there because there's an equal sign, right? 18. No, 19. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, first things first. Literal equation in this example. First of all, is it an equation? What makes uh, the example she gave an equation? Yeah. Equal sign. But it also has it has two or more, what's the word down here, guys? Variables. So don't we also have to have some letters somewhere in here? Okay. How about I do this? How about 13x? How many variables are in there right now? One. Is it a literal equation yet? No. We would need another variable for this, right? Say maybe a y. Okay? This is a literal equation because yes, it's an equation. Furthermore, there's two variables, x and y. Now, you've got to have different letters. You've got to have a different letter, more than, than uh, one. Okay? And then formula. A formula is an equation that shows how one variable is related to another. We used this before, that uh, one that says d is equal to rt r times t, which simply states that a distance is equal to a rate times what, guys? What's the t stand for in this formula? So if I knew the rate and the time, I could multiply them together to get a what? If I knew the rate and the time of something, I could multiply, the, um, to, uh, multiply those two uh, terms together to get a distance. 
the formulas. The formulas are going to be basically letters that we use to substitute numbers in to give solutions. All right. Okay. Um, right here, I want you to recall rules for solving <coughs> equations. We've talked about this a lot this year so far. When we're solving equations, what we kind of said, hey, you know, it would be pretty important if we did what? <coughs> step here. Distribute if necessary, okay? You know what combining like terms means. Uh, you know how to undo addition, subtraction. You also know how to undo multiplication, division, or fractional coefficients. So just recall those. Uh, we've done a nice job working with those this year. One thing I want to put down here that's pretty important is what's called a factor toolkit, okay? I want you to kind of put a line like this right here. Okay, this is going to be important for some of the problems in order for us to solve so that we make sure we understand. We all know the distributive property gets rid of what for us? What does the distributive property get rid of? <coughs> gets rid of parentheses. As an example, what if I had something like, I don't know, uh, x times 4r plus, I don't know, 3s. Okay. If I wanted to rewrite that without parentheses, if I wanted to write that without parentheses, I'd have to take x and distribute it to everything inside here, right? So I'd have to take 4r times which variable first, guys? So this would be 4r times what? 4r times what? <coughs> x. Do you do that expression when you see 4rx? All right there. Okay. And then to that, you would be adding your second distribution, which would be 3s times what? Okay. Now, guys, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask a question. This is going to be very important. I'm going to click on the part that I want you to understand over on the right side for 30 seconds. Guys, in this first expression up here, how many times did x show up? How many times did x show up? that first expression. How many times do you see it? Once. In the second expression, after you distribute it, how many times does x show up? Twice. Okay. What's going to be very important for us today when we're solving these types of problems when we get to them is that you have just one variable to get alone. So if I say, hey, I want you to solve for x, you don't want multiple x's in here. You're only going to want one x. So instead of going this direction today, going from parentheses to no parentheses, we're going to have to go ahead and set up a situation where it's saying we have an expression without parentheses. We want to work backwards to write it with parentheses. Okay, so we're going to be working backwards. So this factor toolkit is important. What this is really saying is kind of apply the distributive property. Distributive property, and I want you to do that backwards. Okay, so let me show you what I'm getting at. I want you to distribute backwards. So let's just suppose I have an expression that looks like the following. Suppose you have something like uh, 2RT um, X. Plus uh, 5 B X. Okay. Now notice what color did I put the X in? Clear blue, right? Okay. That expression. How many X's is that written? Like one or two? I just say one or multiple. In this case, two of them, right? We had just got done saying it's going to be really important that if we're solving for a variable, we only want that variable to show up how many times? One time. Okay. So we're going to kind of distribute backwards. And now I'm going to show you how this works. Basically, if x is common in these two parts, what you're going to do is you're just going to take it out of those parts. And you're going to throw it out in the front. Okay? You're going to throw it out in front. So, guys, if I'm working backwards, this expression didn't have parentheses. We want to probably rewrite it so that it does have parentheses. So after you take the x out, insert parentheses. Okay? Well, if I've taken an x out here and an x out here, Parts you're going to put back in parentheses is everything else except the x's. Okay, so what's going to go inside of parentheses now, guys? 2RT plus 5D. 
Okay. Now, if you would distribute again, go this times this and this times this, isn't that what you had in the beginning? Okay. So if I'm saying, hey, use distributive property in this section, you're kind of working what direction? Backwards. Okay. You understand that? I'm going to have you guys practice one on your own or tell me what. I forget. Uh, here's what I'm going to say. We want to factor out a, a, a y in this. So here we go. 3ry minus 7abcy. Okay. I want you to factor that, or I want you to rewrite that so there's only one y there. Okay. I want you to rewrite that so there's only one y. How would I do that? How about an explanation? You guys tell me. I don't know. Anybody have a thought? What am I trying to, to write just one time? The y. So where am I going to move that to? Okay, we're going to pick it up. Let's pull it out front. And here's some parentheses. After I pull the y out, I'm taking it out of everything up here, right? All agree? What's going in parentheses then? Go ahead, Jacob. 3r minus 7abc. All right. Think about it. If I distribute this times this, wasn't that the 3ry right there? And if I took this mess times this mess, isn't it 7abcy there? Okay, you understand what I'm doing here? That would be very important to understand. All right, let's head back to the front page here, and let's get started with what uh, what's going to be important to us. Again, you might want to put a star by this. This is going to be very important to succeed, all right? Okay, I'm on page two of your notes here, guys. And uh, just a little quick exploration here to talk about. Look here on the front of that top page. Hold one second here. Can I have a volunteer to read that exploration part up top for me before uh, I get back to you here? Who wants to read that for me? That just that top sentence. Emily, will you read that for me? So that, just that area. That yeah, just that part up there, please. The area of a parallelogram is A equals pH, where A is the area and B is the base and E is the Okay. So what kind of shape are we working with, guys? Parallelogram. I'm going to have you draw this quickly. So here's my little parallelogram. And it's a pretty little parallelogram. Like it? It's very school spirited. All right. First of all, how many square units on the inside? What's the area? Let me tell you the areas. How long? Everybody agree with that? 30 square units. Right? What about your base? What's your base length? Six. Well, there's a base length of six. And then the height, they put a question mark. We don't know the height. You guys agree that this is the height right here? All agree? All right. Here's kind of what we're doing today. First of all, it says write the formula for the area of a parallelogram here. Okay. What did I say the area of a parallelogram was up top here? What did we say it was? So the formula is area is equal to a base times a height. Everybody agree there? Okay, now, the second part of this says substitute the given values into the formula, then solve for h. So what do they mean by substitute the given values into the formula? What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? So if the A is 30, this A value is going to be a 30. And then the B is going to be 6, and then times what? H, right? Well, it says solve the formula in the first part without putting values into this right here. Oh, I should back up. We need to solve the equation now. Right? Okay, what would you do to both sides now once you had 30 is equal to 6 times H? Divide each side by six. We know that. That's pretty simple, right? 
Okay. Divide by six. And what do we get h to equal here, guys? Five. I agree. Okay. Now, this is where things are going to be pretty neat for you. This third part right here, maybe star this up here quickly. We can put a nice star by it. This is where things are going to get kind of neat for you. This now says solve the formula in the first part for h without putting values in. So we're saying rewrite the formula, just don't put 30 and 6 in this time. They may not give you anything, but they want you to solve for which variable again, guys. When I say solve for this variable, your job isolate a get it alone. Now, I think for you guys, what would be good um, would be a circle. I want to kind of color code stuff here a little bit so I know which variable I'm trying to solve for. Okay? Don't forget about inverse operations, inverse of addition, inverse of multiplication, those types of things. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite this formula as follows. I'm going to write A is equal, whoops, let me try that again. But I'm going to write A is equal to B times, notice I'm going to write H here in red. You guys might want to circle it. Okay? They're going to give you stuff like this now. Guys, we're good when there's numbers. The thing that we're going to struggle with a little bit is they're not going to give you all numbers. They're going to give you a lot of what? Letters. Okay? When we have numbers, we get numbers for solutions. We have different letters. We just have to leave stuff based on the operation that we're going to apply to invert what we're trying to do. So in this part right here, it says solve the formula for the first part uh, for h without putting your 6 in. Well, guys, how did you solve for h in the one where it says 30 equals 6h? What did you do? Divided by 6. Well, this here says I want h to be alone. This is implying that a is equal to b times h. When that h is red the way I have it, or if that h is circled on your notes, I'm saying I've got to get h all by itself. I don't care what's on the other side, but I want h to be all by itself. Okay? Guys, doesn't this say b times h right here? What would you do to both sides here to try and get h alone? Divide by b. Great, Mason. Excellent. Divide both sides by b. Now, here's your problem. Whoops, I don't want that in red. I want this in. <laughs> Wowzers, Parson. Divide both sides by b. Now, guys, just like up here, like the 6 over 6 cancel each other, what's the b over b going to do to each other right here? Cancel. They're the same term. Guys, when I do that, is h all alone on that side? Okay. Now, look at the left side. Can you do with anything with a over b at all? I can't. So, what I say here is I've solved for h. h is alone. That's what we're after. h is going to equal my capital A divided by b. There it is. Same process, right? Same process, right? One just had numbers, one has all variables. Okay? Now it says compare. How are your answers related? Well, in each case, will we be able to get H alone? Which process did you have to apply to get H alone both times? Well, not distributive, but inverse of multiplication, which would be division. So couldn't I say we use division? Division property of, what am I going to say? What's the last word? Keeps everything balanced. What's the word? Division property of, a lot of talk about this word in the news lately. Equality, yep. You just had to divide to get H alone. Same concept, okay? So if you're struggling, maybe say, okay, what if there were numbers in here instead of letters? What operations would I apply to get that alone? So let's do this here, guys. Let's talk about this. I think it would be a good idea for you to rewrite these equations. Okay? Rewriting a literal expression. It says solve the literal expression. It's literal because it has how many different variables? In this case, 2, x and y. Solve the literal equation. 4x minus 7y equals 12 for which variable? Y. What variable am I trying to get alone? I want to circle that. I'm going to rewrite it like this. I, I think this helps. 4x minus 7y, whoops, 4x minus 7y, I'm going to put y in red because that's the letter I want to get all alone, right? And this is going to equal what value still? Anybody have thoughts before we might start? 
forget about solving simple equations. Don't forget about solving equations with variables on both sides. Don't forget about some of the stuff we've done with absolute values. CJ, you've got an idea? Okay. Explain to me why you want to add 7. CJ, can I ask you one question though? How is 7 related to y? What's happening between the 7 and the y? Well, it says negative 7y or minus 7y. What operation is happening between 7 and y? Multiplication. multiplication. So is, is addition going to take care of that multiplication of 7? You would divide at some point, right? Okay. Think about your rules. Think undo addition, subtraction first, undo multiplication, division second. And I think, hold the thoughts here, you two girls. I think what I want to do is maybe rewrite this. I don't like the way that this is written. The variable I'm going to solve for, I'm going to move out to the front. Now keep in mind, what kind of 7y is this? It's negative. I'm going to pull this out to here. Whoops. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to rewrite it. I'm going to rewrite it as negative 7 times y. Okay, what kind of 4x do I still have? Now, I'm moving this out front because I work better if I'm trying to solve for variables out front. Okay. I don't disagree that there's some addition and subtraction going on here, um, CJ, but um, there's actually some addition of what going on here, guys? 4x. Guys, i got to get the 7 and the 4x out of there somehow. All right. Um, Kaylee, what do you think? Let's get rid of this 4x for both sides first. Now be careful on this, guys. Don't forget about combining like terms and stuff like that. What's a positive 4x and negative 4x to do from previous sections? They are going to cancel. They're just done. Okay. On the left-hand side, what are we left with? Negative 7 times, here comes that variable I'm trying to solve for, y. And this is still going to equal now, be careful, do 12 and 4x combine, are they like terms? They're not. So all I can write the right side is 12 minus what? What's our goal right now, guys? What are we trying to do? We're trying to isolate that y value, aren't we? Okay, so what's my next step? You got it, kiddo. Divide both sides by negative 7, okay? Question? Exactly, it could be because if you wanted it, as long as you keep the signs the same, because that is negative 4x and that is plus 12. You can do it that way too. Yep. And the nice thing about the computer, one, it's able to submit if it ever submits. I can't believe it won't submit. What's this saying? Last we count to 10. Is that right? Right. Uh, what was that saying? Um, oh, yeah. Can you write it as negative 4x plus 12? Yeah. The nice thing about it is this. If you write it like that in, in, in your uh, answers for, for solving this and maybe cheating, because what I'm doing up here, I both get to write. That's the beauty of it. Okay. What am I going to divide both sides by now? Uh, go ahead. Uh, Kelly, I forgot what you said. Negative 7. All right. Very good. Guys, what are the negative sevens going to do to each other here? Cancel. Hey, here's a quick question. Once those negative sevens drop out, once those negative sevens drop out, have I accomplished what I set out to do? Isolate y. Get it alone, right? So what I do then is I say, hey, y is equal to this mess right up here. I say y is equal to, what did I have, 12 minus 4x? In your case, uh, Emily, you might have negative 4x plus 12 up top. This is all over what? There it is. There it is. Why is it alone? So you don't have to have values of y underneath. Like you solve these values of y. You could. And I'm not going to get into that. I think for our purposes today, since this is so new for you guys, I see I'm assuming it's new. I haven't seen stuff like this. Yes, no? A little bit? Okay. My whole purpose here is once you have your variable alone, shut it down. That's what we're really trying to accomplish here. All right. Question, Hannah? Oh, just stretching. 
All right. Boom. Page three. Rewriting a literal equation. This is a special one, so watch. What's it say? Be careful. To solve the literal equation, 3w plus, plus 4wp equals a 4w. You know what? That whole a and w combination makes me kind of hungry right now. All right? All right, never mind. What variable am I trying to solve for this time? In the last equation right here, when I was trying to solve for y at the bottom, how many times did y show up in the equation? Just the one time, right? In this equation that I'm looking at now, how many times does w show up? Twice, okay? <coughs> what am I gonna have to pull out so w is only written once? Mm. You're pulling W out, right? Okay, because it occurs here and here. I agree. We have to pull it out. We only write it once. If I can solve for W, I don't want W to show up once. So on the left side, this whole left side, I'm going to pull the W out. So you go W, and then what was in the parentheses again for me? 3 plus 4P. And think about it, guys. We're just distributing backwards to write that W once. Here's how this works. What's W times 3 if I was distributing? Well, that's my... 3w. And what would w times 4p be? 4wp. What's it still equal to? Okay, so now listen carefully on this. We have w right here times a mess, right? But if you have w times a mess, and I want to get w alone, how do you invert w times a mess? Divide by a lot. So what are you going to divide both sides by? 3 plus what? And this is all going to get divided by what? Help me on the left side. What's going to happen here? They're done. What's alone? Am I done? Is W alone? You bet I'm done. So I'm just going to rewrite it so it looks nice. We would say W equals... A all over what, guys? There it is. There it is. New but not impossible, right? Doesn't this just basically run off the properties that we've done in the past that involve numbers? We're just using variables. Same principle, using variables. All right? Let's do another one quickly. By the way, what time is this in? Is it 10.08 today? Let's get these next two done here for sure, and then I might have time to run through the next two. We might get this done. It says the formula for surface area of a prism is S equals, this is an L, not 21, but that's an L. So 2LW plus 2LH plus 2WH. Solve for what? Note says this is another tough one, you guys. All right, and something like this, we have to take a, a, an initial step. First of all, where are the L's at? Well, there's one here, and there's one here, right? So there's multiple L's, so we're going to have to pull them out, aren't we? Everybody agree? Okay. Here's what I want you to understand here. I'm going to start by subtracting 2WH from both sides. And the reason I'm doing that is because 2WH does not involve which variable? L. You want to get all the stuff with the letter that you're trying to solve for, or the variable that you're trying to solve for, alone on one side. So if one term doesn't have the variable you're looking for, move it to the other side. So anything with L on it has to be on the same side to start. Does that make sense? Okay. So we're going to subtract 2WH from both sides. All right. So what will I have on the left side? S minus what, kiddos? Minus 2WH. And over here, what are the 2WH is going to do? Cancel, right? And we're left with 2. I'm going to make a cursive L because my L's look like 1's. 2LW plus 
2L H here. Okay? Keep in mind, which variable am I solving for? Solving for the L. Does L appear one time or multiple times now on the right? Multiple times. So what property are we going to have to do backwards to solve for that? Distributive. So leave the left side alone. It is still S minus 2WH. We're going to pull L out of both of these. So I'm going to have L times what, kids? 2W plus... Okay, so to get L alone, you have L times a mess again. You ever done the one where you have tried to hold a sneeze in and you do one? And then all of a sudden in class, you just <laughs> like that. You ever done that before? Has anybody ever done the sneeze, like the half sneeze? Like you almost sneeze, but you didn't sneeze? It's like a. It's like a. It's like a <laughs> uh, okay, whatever. What am I going to divide both sides by? The mess, right? The mess. 2W plus what? What happens to the messes over here? Boom, see ya. Is L alone? If you have to type in an answer then, what are you going to type in? That mess right there. S minus 2WH divided by 2W plus 2H. Whew. I don't know about you, but this is pretty intense. Let me ask this question first of all. How many are on board with me right now? Are you with me at this point? It will be difficult, but we're going to work through it, okay? Follow the rules. Let's do one real quickly. This is an easy one. Solve the distance formula. B equals what here, guys? RT. RT, we want to solve for R. Maybe it's a good idea to circle what I'm trying to get alone. I said R times T. Which process to get R alone? First of all, is there just one R or multiple R's in this thing? One. Thoughts? Thoughts? What do you think, Ham G? Divide by T. So what's R going to look like when you're done? What's your rate going to look like? R equals T divided by T. T divided by T. All right. I'm going to pick that spot to stop right now. We'll pick this up tomorrow. Uh, fact that I didn't get everything done today means I'm probably looking at a test on Tuesday instead of Monday. Okay? Sounds good to everybody? All right. Uh, I'll, I'll send the assignment out for this section if you want to get started on it, but it probably won't be due until Tuesday for you if you feel like getting started, okay, guys? Hey, remember, a couple things. If you want to retake that quiz, put your name up on the board. I'll send it to you. Quick quizzes. If you didn't finish and need to make corrections, do that as well. And don't forget the 1.4 assignment. If you have questions, I'm available until 3.45 tonight. Make sure that's submitted by 4 o'clock today. All right? Have a great day. Um, yep, but it should be a minus, not a plus. Yep. Yeah, go ahead, just grab a pen and do it. Thanks, Nolan. And then this is, I did those two problems. Oh, yep, yep, set it up. I'm going to just start the pile of papers up there returning them, okay? Okay. Thank you.